Good morning. I'm Dr. Cam, and I wanted to share a little bit about what I just committed to. Um, I don't know if you've heard of 75 Strong. It is a program that is supposed to build mental strength and grit. Two of the things that just the idea of them terrify me because that means um, hard. I hear hard. In fact, it's called 75 hard. And I heard about this and right the second I heard about it, texted my sister and said, do you want to do this? That was my first mistake because my sister loves challenges like this. And she texted back going, I'm in, which means now I'm in. And what this 75 strong is, is it's 75 days of doing, the things that we're doing are not that difficult when they stand on their own. It's drinking a gallon of water, which that to me is extremely difficult. I've already had 32 ounces today and probably peed about seven times already and it's 9.30. So it's gonna be a long day. Um, making sure that you get outside to exercise, which of course we need to do, good diet, reading. The things that are scare me the most is it's 75 days without fail. If you mess up even one day, there's no, there's no default days. If you mess up one day, you gotta start all over again. And the other thing that kind of terrifies me <laughs> is there's no drinking which sounds terrible, but I'm about to go on vacation and I kind of want some wine when I'm on vacation because that to me is like vacation. So now I'm going on vacation without it. So I've decided to do this and I'm really struggling with this commitment. I'm struggling already. It's day one and I'm already <laughs> worried about staying motivated to do it. I think the big problem I'm having is I'm focusing on what I'm going to lose. I'm focusing on the fact that I'm giving up any possible days of sleeping in, which I love to do on the weekends. I'm giving up my glasses, my glass of wine, which I only drink on the weekends, but still knowing I have that glass of wine I like. Um, I'm giving up just the freedom of being able to do whatever I want to do because now I've committed to some rigorous commitment and schedule. What I'm not focusing on is what I'm gaining out of this, which is grit, which is health, more a more healthy body, more energy, hopefully fitting into some of my shorts again that are a little snug. Um, there's a lot of wonderful things, doing something, a challenge with my sister. There's some great things that I'm getting out of this, which I need to stay focused on because that will motivate me. The other thing that's really hard for me is thinking 75 days. I will end on October 3rd, 3rd or 4th, if I'm doing the math right. That feels like a long time rather than focusing on day by day, something that's manageable. And I want to think about this when we're trying to motivate our teens because it can be an enormous challenge to keep our teens motivated. We often feel like, I mean, if, if what we were trying to motivate them to do was sleep or stay on their devices, that would be extremely easy. We'd be winning every day. When we want to motivate them to get out of bed or to get off their devices or to do something productive, get outside, read a book, I mean, some of our kids love it, a lot of our kids don't. When we wanna motivate them to do something that we think is gonna be better for them, it can be a challenge. It often ends up in an argument and frustration and slammed doors and huffing and throwing up our hands and giving up. And we just want to teach them good habits, but we're not feeling successful when we do it. So I want to talk about three components to motivating our kids. And I call this to get them to dig in to do something, D-I-G, 
So I've created a little acronym to help us remember how to get them to dig in. And the first is desire. What is their why? Why would they want to do what we're asking them to do? If we're asking them to do something because we think it's the right thing for them to do, it's not a lot of motivation for them. What is, what's in it for them? Say we're trying to motivate them to help around the house and do a chore. What's in it for them? It sounds, they have to put down the device which they love and what's in it for them with the device is it's entertaining, it's release of dopamine, it gets them away from being bored, it's easy, it's something that we're having to pull them away from to do something they don't wanna do. So we need to look at what's in it for them. What is their why? And a lot of times we will manufacture a why by saying we're gonna take your phone away if you don't do it or take something else away or send them to their room or whatever we're going to do. <laughs> yes, more I am spying on your house. Um, now you know. We, we want to motivate them by threatening something, which it kind of is a threat. I'm going to take your phone away. I'm going to do this. What happens is we're motivating them falsely by having them motivated to avoid something we think will be painful to them. And it may work in the moment. They may do it to avoid getting their phone taken away. But what happens is we've come up with a very short term solution for something we want to develop long time, long term, because now we're stuck having to threaten to take their phone away every single time we want them to do something because their own, own motivation is to avoid getting their phone taken away. The other thing to consider is we are now teaching them to be motivated to avoid something. And there's a lot of ways to avoid doing something. They just want to avoid getting caught, avoid getting into trouble, which means they may become more secretive or they may find out how to manipulate us around it. So we're not teaching them to be motivated to do what we want them to do, we're teaching them to be motivated to avoid getting into trouble. So we need to think of what are they going to get out of this? And when it comes to chores, that might be a really tough thing to figure out what's actually going to motivate them to want to do it. Right now, I can tell you one thing that works extraordinarily well, and it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. Just I want to warn you. It takes time. But one thing that really is rewarding to them is to be recognized for when they help out. To, to comment and go, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Or when you ask them to help out, actually ask them to help out rather than telling them to help out and say, it would be such a great help to me and I would appreciate it so much if you could do this with me and maybe we do it together. And now the reward is actually doing something that makes you feel good, which makes them feel good. Again, it's not gonna happen overnight, but as they learn that they have the option to do it or not, and their option to do it, it ends up in a reward of feeling really good about themselves and helping you, it turns into this intrinsic motivation. So think about what is in it for them, their desire. The second thing to think about is the impact. And the way I break this down is how, what is the skill level and what is the um, challenge of it? So the skill is, is it something that's really easy for them to do or really hard for them to do? Is it in their skill set? And sometimes it may seem like something's in their skill set because you're like, it's not that hard to do. But if they're not exactly sure how to do it, like taking out the garbage, for instance, it seems really obvious, right? But if they're not exactly sure what you mean by that or what the skills, what, what the expectation is, like you need to take the bag out, you need to tie it, want to take it all the way to the trash can, want to put a new bag in, seems simple, 
but we're explaining to them what exactly we're expecting, what the skill is, and if it's within their ability. And it's not too big of a challenge or it's not too big of a scope, like 75 days feels like an enormous, that requires a lot, right? So is it within their abilities or do they need to help figuring out how to do it? And the challenge, that actually is the 75 days, so my, my apologies. The challenge is, how big of a challenge is it? Is it too easy of a challenge where it's like, eh, boring? Or is it too hard of a challenge? And I'm gonna go back to 75 days feels to me like a big challenge. It seems a little overwhelming, so is it too big? of a challenge and can you make it smaller? So one of the things I do a lot with, with the um, teenagers that I mentor when they feel like they've got something, a big obstacle, is we chunk it. And I say, instead of going, say, practicing for an hour, go practice for five minutes, five minutes. That seems very manageable. And then they're thinking in five minutes, I'm done. And now we've shortened and simplified what we're trying to motivate them to do into something that's within their skill set, so it's not too difficult and too much of a strain, and something that is not too overwhelming of a challenge, but is a challenging enough to make it interesting. So look at that piece of it as well. The third thing is a goal. And I love setting goals for teenagers. For myself too, but it's great to set a goal for teenagers. And I've talked to a lot of teenagers and to parents who are frustrated because their teens aren't getting out of bed or they can't motivate them to do anything. And I ask them, well, what are they trying to achieve? What is, what's motivating them to get out of bed? What is exciting about the day? And if we set something where they've actually got a goal. So let's say, even if it's something like they love playing video games and you set a goal on, do you think you can beat this score? Or they want to, they love playing soccer. And yeah, we can't do team sports right now, but can are there skills that you can develop? And what is your goal? What is your tangible goal that we know you've achieved that? So it's something measurable. You've heard of SMART goals. We're just gonna break it down to, is it measurable? And is it something where you've got a date? Like, let's make sure, let's get, learn how to do this skill by this date. And now they've got something that they're challenged to do, which motivates them to practice. So think of what is their why behind what you're asking, not your why, their why. What is the impact on their ability? So is it within their skill set, or is there something you need to teach them or something you might need to step back and help them develop first? And is the challenge something that is not too overwhelming. And if it feels too overwhelming to them, how do you make it a sm how do you make it smaller? How do you just do the first step and then build upon that? And the third thing is what is the goal? What are they trying to achieve? So you can start celebrating small wins towards that achievement, which is going to keep them encouraged. And when you're done with the big goal, you can have a big celebration to celebrate it. One, things I, one thing I love and I'm going to challenge you to do is to actually come up with a family challenge. This adds the, the element of competition, which let's do friendly competition here, but it, ends, it, it builds in some competition and it builds in some accountability and it builds in some fun. Make it fun. So now the entire family is involved in some sort of challenge. So let's say you want your kid to get out and exercise more. Instead of nagging your child to get out and do some exercise, get outside, put down your phone, go outside for a while. Why don't you take a walk? Why don't you do this? Why don't you set a challenge saying the entire family is on a challenge that we have to be outside for 45 minutes every day. And whoever wins this challenge, let's say we're gonna do it just this week. Every day this week, we've gotta get out for 45 minutes. And when we do the 45 minutes, we have a small celebration. And at the end of the day, we have a big celebration for everyone that's done it. Or who can spend the most time outside or run the longest or whatever it is. Set up a challenge that fits what you're encouraging your team to do. You get involved. 
So it's not about you nagging your teen. It's about you and your teen and your whole family doing something together. And start learning how to motivate your teen to achieve something that they're proud of, which is intrinsic motivation rather than external motivation, which is trying to either win a bribe or avoid, which a lot of times is how we motivate to avoid something negative, like getting their phone taken away. And right now when your teens are, right now during adolescence is a window of opportunity. Because as we've discussed, this is when our teens brains are in their most formative years and they're plastic and they're developing habits and they're developing I, their identity. And if we can start building in them the grit and their own intrinsic motivation, their ability to set goals and to work to achieve those goals now, we're building this, we're building this capacity and this habit in them that will be something that they will have for the rest of their life. Which is my motivation to you <laughs> to start learning how to motivate your kids with intrinsic motive, using intrinsic motivation. Because we don't want to follow them around for the rest of their life, threatening to take away their phone if they don't get a job or if they don't go to work or if they don't, whatever it is, we don't want to have to teach them to be motivated by external rewards or external punishments. That's why so many of these kids go into the workplace on are frozen because they don't know how to motivate themselves intrinsically. So this is our window of opportunity right now to teach them how to do that. And I'm taking notes for myself because I am working on making sure that I'm motivating myself intrinsically to do the 75 hard. And if anybody else wants to do it with me, let me. So I want to tell you before I go that if you like these messages that I've been doing, I'm and but miss them on Facebook Live, I actually am now putting them on YouTube. So you can follow me on YouTube at Parenting Teens with Dr. Cam. And I'm actually uploading them to iTunes. Ooh, I've got my own podcast now. Um, it's a podcast called Parenting Teens with Dr. Cam. Easy to remember, right? So you can listen to those while you're going on your walk to get out for your 45 minutes of exercise. That is your family challenge. So love for you to follow me there. And if you do, like me, share, whatever. I love the love. And I love you all. And thank you for your support and listening. And let's do everything we can to help motivate those teens.